so I must admit, looking at the, the, um, the speakers list and the list of topics here, I'm feeling a little bit out of place. I'm not an academic. I'm not an entrepreneur. I am that evil venture, venture capitalist that you guys are talking about. Um, <laughs> so um, do, you, do you mind me if I, I, I seem a little nervous here? Um, we won't throw any. <laughs> um, well, I think you'll like me. Um, <laughs> So um, today I'm going to talk about um, how equity cri um, crowdfunding, um, or crowdfinancing as it's also called, um, is changing my role as a VC. And um, you know, more specifically, I want to talk about a little bit um, of what I look for in um, companies who are equity uh, crowdfunding, because that's what my company does. We invest in um, companies that are listed on Rock the Post, on AngelList, on MicroVentures, all these equity crowdfunding platforms. Um, so we take a little bit of a, a different bent there. Um, and I just want to clarify that you know I'm going to use crowdfunding as shorthand for equity crowdfunding uh, crowdfinancing but I'm really focused on the I'm investing in your company you're going to give me equity um, how do we all right so that's me um, you can read a little bit about my background here but basically um, the most important thing is that I'm a venture capitalist surprise um, and so we source our companies actually both ways. Um, we probably look at 90% um, of the companies we look at come from um, uh, these equity uh, crowdfunded platforms, and then about 10% of what I do comes from the New England area and the very traditional um, venture capital sourcing through um, my professional networks, through um, the various innovation centers and incubators and accelerators that exist in the New England area, and um, from referrals that I get from other venture capital companies. So I do get to play around in a little bit of both, um, and I think that gives me a good perspective on the types of companies that are out there and the quality thereof. Um, so there's a lot of uh, discussion on uh, crowdfunding as a disruptive force for VCs, and there's actually a lot of hostility on, um, on the part of VCs towards equity crowdfunded companies. There's this idea out there that they're not as strong, um, they're only crowdfunding because you know they couldn't get the interest of um, venture capitalists, et cetera, et cetera. So that makes what I do a little bit unique um, because we're, we're actually a little bit of a hybrid between um, um, angel <coughs> groups and venture capitalists. Um, we raise small funds of one to two million dollars. We raise them over the course of about three months and then we look to deploy that capital about one tenth of it, of it at a time very, very quickly. Um, in companies that we find on these portals. And so our main, you know, we have that goal of maximizing our ROI, but our main goal is to get um, equity out there from um, those 8 million minus the 300,000 active angels, um, get that fresh um, boat of capital out to these companies. Um, and so, you know, we covered a little bit about um, the entrepreneurial financing ecosystem, but. Um, in the previous presentations, but sometimes this graph is um, very helpful. This right here is where equity crowdfunding is, is having the most impact. These are companies that are raising a quarter of a million to about a million dollars. It's a really hard space to get financing. Um, usually, um, if you're on the lower end of that spectrum, you can go to friends and family if you have the right network. If you have that rich, rich uncle, if you have that rich grandmother, maybe you have uh, that professor um, from your university who made some money in his own startup. Um, if you don't have that network, or if you're um, looking to raise a lot um, larger amount of capital, you're going to angel groups. These are, um, these are business professionals who are kind of, a lot of them are investing for fun. They tend to have expertise in a particular sector or area, um, and they've gotten together to pool their capital um, uh, to invest in companies like yours. And it's a bit of a slog to go to these angel groups and get money, because they're looking at writing checks of you know, $300,000, dollars $400,000, and so they're gonna do a lot of diligence on you. They're gonna do a lot of research. <coughs> it can take six to nine months to get funding, and if you're a small startup just trying to get that product out the door, six to nine months is a very long time. Um, and so that can, that can make or break you. Um, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what I look for in, um, in companies that are crowdfunded. And as it turns out, the fun fundamentals really do, um, they apply to both. Um, so we're looking for strong teams, early sales, market opportunity, all the stuff you look for in traditionally sourced companies. These investments are just as strong um, when they come through tech stars as when I get them off of AngelList. 
um, there's no difference there. The only difference um, between crowdfunded and traditional companies, as I'll call them, is that for a traditional company, I have a personal recommendation from Techstars, from Next Ventures, from um, an angel investor with a strong investment track record who I trust, who I know very well, that is telling me that this entrepreneur has what it takes to get them from that proverbial closet to Silicon Valley or you know, to that next big exit that they're looking for. Um, so when I have that recommendation, when it's from somebody that I trust, I might, you know, only, I might accept the company um, to invest in that doesn't have early sales or user traction. I'm willing to take that extra chance um, on that company. And I'm not really do willing to do that for a crowdfunded company. Um, I'm actually much, much stricter on them and have um, much more criteria that I expect them to demonstrate. Um, first of all, that early sales or user traction, um, that's very important because with equity crowdfunded companies, um, I'm looking at companies across all stages and all um, stages of, vis of business development. For traditional companies, I focus on ad tech and mobile. That's um, what my background is in. That's what I know the most about. But for these crowdfunded companies, I've looked at um, healthcare device companies. I've looked at tech-enabled catering companies. I've looked at consumer products. Um, I've looked at makeup. These are things that I don't necessarily have expertise in. Um, so that early sales or user traction is very important for me to gauge product market fit. Um, strong <coughs> advisors are also really, really key. Again, usually for a traditional company, um, with investors writing the size of checks that I'm writing um, these folks, they might ask me for, um, for mentorship or they might ask me for, to sit on their board or there's some way that I can influence this company in what I believe will maximize the ROI to, out of that investment. For crowdfunded companies, that's not the case. Um, so I really have to trust that they've assembled the correct team around them um, or at least what I view as a correct team and a strong team to guide them. Um, to that, that next stage of financing for them. Um, let's see. And on a related note, um, experienced investors are very, very similar. Again, because I'm investing in sectors that I don't know much about. Um, if I'm looking at a healthcare company, for example, um, I'm going to take a look at who their investors are, and I'm going to go to AngelList, and I'm going to look up the portfolio of investments that those um, those angel investors have. And if I see that you have a lot of investors who have invested in a lot of healthcare companies, that's a check in your favor. Um, that's a little bit of trust that I now have in you as a company that I didn't have before. Um, and I'll talk about social buzz and investor traction in a moment, but um, this reputable crowdfunding site, this is actually very um, important um, for me. And there are some Crowdfunding sites like AngelList, um, they don't do any curation. Any, any company who wants to raise money um, can list themselves on AngelList. But there's a lot of other companies out there, um, like Rock the Post, who do a little bit of curation. The, um, they determine whether or not their companies are actually ready to raise money. Um, and so when I say reputable crowdfunding company, this means I've talked to the management team and I really understand what their diligence process is like and what their curation process is like, what their criteria is for companies. Um, I'm really interested in um, how selective they are, what additional resources they provide to their companies to, again, help them succeed. It's like that advisor base. Um, and I'm also very invested in who's investing on their site, how much money they've raised, um, those kinds of things. And so, sorry, again, nervous. <laughs> um, and so that's, that's very important to me, and that's the first... Um, that's the first thing that I do before evaluating um, any company on a site is really develop that, um, that relationship with the platform and understand their background. And I think it's something that I really recommend that any individual accredited investor who's looking at investing on these portals do. It's probably the single most important thing. If you're going to do nothing else, invest, um, invest that time in diligencing, diligencing your platform. Um, and so kind of on that, that social buzz, um, thing. I'm just, I'm just kind of wondering um, how, many, how many people here are young enough to have had that realization in school that you could look up a topic on Wikipedia before you wrote an essay on it? <laughs> All right, yes. Um, so looking, looking to social buzz for um, these equity crowdfunded companies is very, very similar. 
Um, you do your, your initial survey on Wikipedia, and then you see what their resources are, and then, all right, now I know enough to go do some additional academic research and hit the library and that kind of thing. So, um, you know, looking at press, social activity, and um, the questions that investors are, are asking these, these entrepreneurs, that's very, very important. That's my, my Wikipedia article on diligence, um, my additional research that I do on these companies. Um, you, you can learn a lot that, that way, and you can learn um, one of the big things there is how seriously are the entrepreneurs taking their raise. Um, if they're very on top of the ball and interacting with investors a lot, then they're taking their raise very seriously, and maybe that's a good sign that they're taking their company very seriously, too. Um, there's also this added thing that social buzz tends to correlate with money raised. Um, if you have a lot of social buzz, you're attracting a lot of potential would-be investors. The more would-be investors in the pipeline, the more eventual um, investors uh, will actually give you money. And so if you're raising a million dollars and only manage to raise $300,000, it's going to be a lot harder for you to hit those milestones um, that you need to hit to be successful. But if you have that social buzz, you actually raise the full million dollars that you want, then it becomes a lot easier for you um, to build that successful business. Um, so I definitely look for that. And, um, and this last one, the social buzz is particularly important for AngelList um, because they don't curate any of their companies. And if you're raising money, you can just throw up a, a portfolio up there. Um, social buzz is a way of testing legit the legitimacy of a company. If I'm raising money, the first thing I do is tell all of my family and friends and all of my customers to say, hey, talk about me. I go to the press, hey, talk about me. I'm raising money. Um, and if you're not doing that, then there's, that's a potential red flag that people tend to overlook. Um, so I usually, when I, I talk, I'm, I'm usually talking to entrepreneurs um, and trying to help them set up their, um, their, um, their campaigns and this kind of thing. So you know, a lot of bit more of what I do is, is very practical advice. And so this is my practical advice slide that um, if, um, <laughs> If you're going to take uh, one thing away, um, take away this. For you know, Angel, for the investors, for the accredited investors in the room, um, angel investing is very, very risky. Um, even VCs who do this pr professionally, they have an abysmal record. Um, I don't know what my record is. I've only been investing in equity crowdfunded companies since um, September. Um, so it's going to be a little while before I can give you what my success rate is. But um, overall, on a whole, as an industry, we do very badly. And um, angel investors also do very badly. That's kind of why they're called angels. Um, <laughs> um, so you know, you can check off all of those boxes. You can have all this additional, additional criteria for crowdfunded companies that you don't have for you know, that guy down the street who wants you to give money for his hot dog stand. But at the end of the day, um, it's, it's risky business. And so sometimes it's OK to go with your gut. And you really believe in an idea, and you really believe in an entrepreneur. Um, write him a check for 50 k um, Why not? Um, you're really helping these guys out, small businesses. They're growing the economy. They create the most jobs. Um, they create the longest lasting jobs. They have the most impact. So you know, give back if you're in that position to. Just, just go for it. Why not? Um, and then for the entrepreneurs, um, it's a lot of work to run the successful crowdfunding campaign. You can, you know, from that start to finish, you can raise money in a few days and be done with it. But it takes months of research beforehand to target your investors, spending time on AngelList, Googling um, all the um, accredited investors who have the network that you want to tap into. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs forget that. So they'll just throw something up on, um, on AngelList and, well, why aren't I raising money? Why isn't this successful? Why am I having such trouble? Um, so, you know, do, do your homework. Crowdfunding is around because of the internet, so use that as a tool to set your campaign and set your company up for the most amount of success possible. And that's me. Yeah.